All right, so we're going to continue here, hopefully end it off. This is Isaiah chapter 19, verse 3. It says, the Egyptians will lose heart and will bring their plans to nothing. They will consult the idols and the spirits of the dead, the mediums and the spiritists. Verse 4. I will hand the Egyptians over to the power of a cruel master, and a fierce king will rule over them, declares the Lord, Yahweh Almighty. Which we're going to talk about the power of this cruel master, which will rule over them. <laughs> Let's read this in Isaiah 19 and 17. And the land of Judah will bring terror to the Egyptians. Everyone to whom Yahweh is mentioned will be terrified because of what Yahweh Almighty is planning against them. Again, as we read in Micah chapter 5 verse 7. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that real quick. The remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many people like dew from Yahweh, like showers on the grass, which do not wait for anyone or depend on men. Verse 8, the remnant of Jacob will be among the nations, in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, which mows and mangles as it goes, and no one can rescue. So that's why it says, And the land of Yahweh will bring terror to the Egyptians. Everyone to whom Yahweh is mentioned will be terrified. Why? Because they're breaking free. The Most High Yahweh is with them. Their God is with them. Okay? So this is why it's happening now. It says here, Because of what Yahweh Almighty is planning against them. Isaiah 28 and 18. Your covenant with death will be annulled. You see that? Cancelled, buddy. Your agreement with the realm of the dead will not stand. So it doesn't matter how much you try to send these demons, these agents, but the Most High God says it will not stand because they are dead, never to rise. So who's going to help you, Esau, once again? Your agreement with the realm of the dead will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge sweeps by, you will be beaten down by it. Like it says here in Job 18 and 14, he is torn from the security of his tent and marched off to the king of terrors. See that? Again, he is torn from the security of his tent and marched off to the king of terrors. You see that? Because Esau right now, he's going to continue to walk proud and haughty. He's going to ignore this. You see, he thinks this is a game. So this is why, right, we have to let him, let, let him continue to think that this is a game. Let him continue to be proud and arrogant. Let him continue to think that America is going to last another 20 years, right? He could think of that all he wants. But the truth is, the Most High God says, the day and the hour, when he falls, it's going to hurt him very, very bad. You understand that? Because of how haughty he is. You understand? This is why the Most High Yahweh says that when he awakes from his dream, Everything that he had is going to be gone. All right? And then he's going to realize reality. Right now, he's still living his American dream. He's, he's living proud and haughty. He doesn't see this coming. All right? He doesn't care. He doesn't care one bit. He thinks this is a game. Remember, the Most High Yahweh says he's, he's ungodly. All right? He doesn't care at all. He despises discipline. He hates instructions. Remember this. All right? So you people out there like, wow, man, you know, why, why are these people just continuing in their, in their ways? It seems like this is never going to end. Well, you know what? You stop becoming faint-hearted and understand that's Esau being haughty and proud. Okay? He's arrogant. This is why we're not like them. They're arrogant. They think that their establishment and everything they made is going to last forever. You see that? So this is why you're not supposed to fret because of evildoers. You're supposed to have faith. And understand that the Most High is going to bring it down very soon, baby. <laughs> and they're going to be in pain. They're going to be in a world of shit when it happens. Because they did not understand. All right? So let them continue to walk proud and unholy and arrogant. All right? Because, you know, like it says, you know, the taller they are, the harder they fall. So it says here, Job 18 and 14. He is torn from the security of his tent and march off. Marched off to the king of terrors. Like it says, like we just read. And uh, sorry. In Isaiah chapter 19 verse 4. 
It says, I will hand the Egyptians over to the power of a cruel master and a fierce king will rule over them. All right. Again, he is marched off to the king of terrors. Job 18 and 15. Fire resides in his tent. Burning sulfur is scattered all over his dwelling. His roots dry up below and his branches wither above. The memory of him perishes from the earth. He has no name in the land. This is what the Most High Yahweh says about Gog and all his horde. No survivors of Edom. He is driven from light into the realm of darkness and is banished from the world. All right? Just like Negan said in this season premiere of The Walking Dead that just came up. What he said, he said, whatever you thought you had going on, that shit is over. All right? I will shut that shit down. So, Isaiah 42 and 5 says, this is what the Most High Yahweh says. The creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people. See that? Who gives breath, that means understanding, to its people, and life to those who walk on it. You see that? Because the Most High Yahweh says that he was going to create a blessing on the earth. Assyria, Egypt, and Yasharel on the earth. But you people out there who don't want this, right? You don't want to be part of this. You want to go with the Hamashiach. You want him to bring you to a new Jerusalem. Well, you're not going to have no part of this. Because that's not part of the Most High's plan. That's part of your wicked imagination. That's that covenant of death. You see that? That's that covenant of death. So you want to sacrifice yourself to some demons? Go right ahead. Okay? So verse 6 says here, I, Yahweh, have called you in righteousness. Who? Jacob. You understand? Yasharel. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. Verse 7. To open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Okay? This is the whole program here. But you people out there that want to continue to wait for your Hamashiachs to come out the sky, right? You're not getting with the program. That's why you're going to be left out in darkness. Okay? Because you're doing the opposite of what the Most High Yahweh wants His people to do. It says, I am Yahweh, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another Hamashiach or another Savior or another God. Again, Yahweh says He will not yield His glory to another to another idol, alright? Or His praises to any anything else. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. So, Isaiah 59 and 10. It says, like the blind, we grope along the wall. Who? Those people who are still waiting for nothing. All right? Those people who want to sacrifice themselves to the demons. It says, like the blind, we grope along the wall, filling our way like people without eyes. You see? Like people without eyes. Again, you are going against your God. This is why it says, sin separates us from God. All right, because you are sinning. You are doing the complete opposite of what the Most High God says he had planned for his people in the last days. So this is your loss, nobody else's. This is your loss. Nobody's gonna weep and well for you, all right? You don't have to pray for us. No, 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 all right? Because a lot of you people out there think that you're holier than thou, right? You like to come up on the comment board and say, oh, you know what, brother, you know, I understand, you know, you may not believe in Jesus, you know, but I hope and I pray in the name of Jesus that you, that you see the way. No, 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 get out of here with that. Pray for yourself. You need eyes, okay? Because you are like people without eyes. So don't come on here talking about I'm going to pray for you. Pray for yourself. You understand? I don't need you to pray for me. I can pray for myself. So understand this here? It says here that you people, it says you stumble. Look what it says here. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. All right? You want to continue to wait for your Hamashiachs? Go ahead. Go ahead. You are the walking dead. Remember that. Isaiah 8 and 20. Consult the most high's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone, whether they're white, black, gay, or straight, whether they're male or female, if anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light in them. Instead, what will happen to them? 
and says distressed and hungry. They will roam through the land. See that? They will roam through the land. When when they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God like they are doing today. Okay? Like they're doing today. Because why? Because they're going against the program. They're not going they're not getting with the program. They're doing the complete opposite of what the most high Yahweh told them. You see that? The most high Yahweh says that he's gonna make a blessing on the earth. But these people, they they're waiting to get out the earth. They hate the earth. Right? They say they want to go to New Jerusalem with golden floors and pearly gates. Again, that is their evil imagination. So this is why they're cursing their king and they're cursing their God. So verse 22. It says here, Then they will look towards the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom. And they will be thrust into utter darkness. Alright? While everybody else is waking up from darkness. So, Isaiah 28 and 18, again, your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with the realm of the dead will not stand. It will not. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is Yahweh's purpose that prevails. Okay? Psalms 33 and 10. Yahweh foils the plans of the nations. He thought the purposes of the peoples. Verse 11, but the plans of Yahweh stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh. Like it says in Micah 4 and 5, all the peoples of the earth may walk in the name of their so-called gods, but we're going to continue to walk in the name of Yahweh forever and ever. The people he chose for his inheritance. Job chapter 5, verse 12. He thought the plans of the crafty, so that their hands achieve no success. Alright? Verse 13. He catches the wise in their craftiness, and the schemes of the wily are swept away. This is why it says this here. Let's see if we can find this. Jeremiah 50 and 24. I set a trap for you, Babylon, and you were caught before you knew it. You were found and captured because why? Because you opposed Yahweh. See that? You went against the word of God. And this is why judgment has come upon you, people. This is why the Most High God says that He's going to bring it down on your own heads. Whether you like it or whether you love it, you will never be able to put nothing above it. These are your days. Job 5 and 13. He catches the wise in their craftiness. And the schemes of the wily are swept away. Okay? Again, whatever you thought you had going on, it's over. Shalom.